So I'll just kind of prephrase this that um, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not, I'm not coming here to tell you that you, that you, that you have to start exercising or how exercise is good for you and this, this, and this. Um, this is the first kind of one of these of, of, of doing this type of stuff. So I don't really know how it's going to go down. I don't know whether you're going to like what I'm going to say, but we'll go with it. And any feedback at the end on this, you can say, well, maybe you should have said this. That'd be much appreciated. Um, so yeah, I'm not here to tell you about the best diet, the best exercise or the best food to eat for abs. Um, because that obviously doesn't exist. And I'm also not going to tell you any secrets. Everyone's like, well, you know, what's the secret for getting in shape or what's the secret for, um, doing this, this and this. And there isn't any, um, well, there is kinda, I just want to come here and tell you guys how to think a little bit different on the concept of being healthy, like, um, kind of living a healthy, a healthy lifestyle. It's more than just having six pack abs or, uh, benching hundred kilos or just, you know, kind of whatever it is. Um, I've seen a lot of unhappy get to those type of positions, um, abs and this and that, and you know, they're not happy. Um, so yeah, so I think kind of living healthy should always be about just being happy, just being confident in you, however that looks and just, and just understanding that you're on a journey. You're not trying to get somewhere. You're always on a journey and that can evolve from time to time. Um, but first, let me tell you just a quick little bit about me or about us, if you don't really know. Um, obviously, Danny's part of the gym and she might have told you bits and bobs or you might have seen her sharing some videos. So S&P started about 10 years ago. Um, the idea that we wanted just to provide a place where people could come and train properly without all the fluff um, that the commercial gyms kind of show in this and that. We just wanted to show what real training was about and that to get the results you want you know it's hard work we work with lots of um, high level athletes um we did lots of stuff for men's health men's fitness um photo shoots for my protein all, all that type of stuff which was cool but i'll be honest it wasn't a sustainable business um so about five years ago we kind of moved to more working with the more of the general public and it's awesome because they because they listen to what you say they understand what you say and then just seeing the impact we had on them was awesome. So we kind of pushed that. Um, and for me personally, my whole outlook on being healthy, this kind of changed a few years ago. Um, my old man passed away within like three months of being diagnosed with cancer. And then the following year, my nephew, who was only four, he passed away from cancer after having it for two years. So then I think, you know, when something like that happens, it kind of makes you kind of question what's, what's the whole concept of being, of being healthy. And I think it's just about enjoy life, do what you want to do because you only, you, you know, you only get one shot. So don't be too hard on yourself and just be happy with obviously what you got and what you want to achieve. Um, okay. So moving on. So obviously S and P, you know, we kind of know what we're doing in terms of getting results and um, have done this, you know, kind of for many years. But the key thing that you need to understand is that everyone is different. So no one concept is going to, is like, it's going to fit everyone. Everyone's, different in terms of their outlook on life, in terms of how they look, their, their size and stuff like that. So don't think that just because your friend down the road is doing a, a certain way that you need to then follow. Um, every, everything's individual. So on that first point, I'm going to go into where, uh, so, no uh, so no one wins a race that they don't want to be in. And by that, I mean, it's like starting stuff that you know you're not going to do three, four months down the line. And this is usually going to be um, taking out foods that you like, taking out um, beer, alcohol or whatever and saying, I'm not going to do that because I'm starting my diet. And usually it'll start with like on a Monday. On Monday, I'm going, to, I'm going to stop eating bread. I'm going to go to the gym five times a week. I'm going to say no to cake. And then because you usually have your cake with your friends, you're like, well, I won't see them now. Um, you know, so those are things that saying them and, Having, having that thought process that you're going to do it, you're actually not going to do it. You might do it for a week or something. <laughs> Heather, you know, no to cake. It's like, um, you, know you, you know you're not going to keep that up. So why are you doing it? And obviously there's different things. And obviously all, all the stuff that I'm saying is, you know, there's nothing that's fixed in stone. You don't say, I'm doing this and I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Everything changes and it comes and goes. So... The question is, when you start something, you've got to ask you, you know, kind of why you're starting it in the first place. Because imagine, obviously, putting all these kind of limitations on yourself and 
Um, if you say no to cake, no to beer, then those are all the things that you enjoy in life. So then suddenly it's like, well, that's not very enjoyable. So you know from the starting point that you're not going to stick with it down the line. It's like the whole, um, the whole media and kind of fitness coaches have tied um, the sense of kind of morality to eating, like eating cake is bad, drinking beer is bad. And then if you hold those concepts in you all the time, that can do you more harm than good down the line. Like at the end of the day, cake is just cake. Cake's what some sugars put together and it tastes nice. So, you know, when you break it down, is cake that bad? And if I say, if someone eats a 500 calorie cake instead of a 2000 calorie binge, then actually the cake's a good option. So it's having that concept of no foods are really bad and it's just understanding where they fit into the bigger picture. So the way around this is to think of, um, is to only join a race that you want to be in. So do things at your pace that you can control. Can we call them bumpers in the sense of like, imagine like a bowling alley and you've got the bumpers up and that's like everything on, on, like on that side is all the stuff that you don't want to do. So this is the stuff that, you know, keeps you in line, all the stuff that you enjoy and you, you know you can work with it. So if you don't want to go to the gym, you know, six times a week, don't. If you don't want to give up cake, don't. If you don't want to meal prep, don't do it or don't even say you're going to do it because you know you're not going to stick with it. So it's just understanding what you want to do and then building things around that because, you know, in the bigger picture, that's always going to last longer. Um, and that obviously that is, that's what's going to get you the results down the line. So instead of looking at things that you want to do, um, so like, yes, yeah, so, so, sorry, it's like, so then start thinking of the things that you want to do. Like I'll go to the gym three times a week. I'll go, I'll go out with my friends and I'll do this and this and think of them as like, um, just normal life rather than a reward. Don't think I'll have cake tonight because I've earned it because that's the wrong concept to have. You've got to have a, I can eat cake whenever I want because I know it fits in with everything else. So once you know what you're doing in, like, in terms of that respect, you know, then you can build a plan around that. Although I'm not saying go and eat cake and you're going to get abs, okay? So, just, you know, so please don't take that because that's not going to happen. But it's just saying that cake can be part of anything. Beer can be part of anything. Not going to the gym can be part of your journey as well. Um, so that's the first thing is only start a race or only start something that you know you can commit to four, five, six weeks down the line. If if you know deep down that you can't commit to it, don't even, you know, don't commit to it. And that could be anything like no carbs, no this, no that. Um, the next point is um, group, index, group indexing versus personal indexing. And this is looking at um, the sense that everyone is different in many, many ways. And not just on the outlook in life, but how, how they respond. Like if you look around, everyone's different, short, tall, wide, small, um, kind of long bones, short bones. So understand that if, if a program or if an exercise in particular works for someone, it might not work for you. And you see this all the time in the gym in the sense of like, um, don't just do an exercise because you think you should be doing it. It's like the media says, you've got to do a deadlift or you've got to do a squat to get bigger and stronger. But then you try and do a deadlift and it always hurts you back. So it's like, okay, well, don't just don't think that just because something's there that you have to do it. And it's the same with um, if you're always squatting and all you want to do is get stronger, leaner looking legs, but the squats don't, don't seem to do it, then your body type might suggest you might be better with doing some single leg work. So it's that whole concept of just because the media or someone says that you need to do these things, it's understanding you and your body and that finding what works for your body because everyone is different. We see people, people who come to the gym or like, through my lenses, I'll be like, he's got long legs. He's got this, he's got this, he's got this. He needs to be doing this, this, and this. Um, so it's just always having that in mind as well. So don't think that one program or one solution is going to fix everyone. Okay. And then the next point, I'm going to go into uh, your, highest your highest achievability is not your highest maintainability. Okay. So when we talk about this, it's like your highest achievability. Think of this as like... Um, as your ceiling, as your best of the best, like the best you've ever done, whether that is eating the best week of food in your mind that you've done, going to the gym as best as you could that week or, or being in the best shape as possible. Then the issue with this is sometimes all we then think about is the best. So if I got to a certain weight, if I got down to my best ever weight and I was going on holiday, then all I ever think about is I want to get back to that weight. 
I want to get back to that weight because say if I was, you know, let's just kind of pick a number. I was 80 kilos in the best shape of my life. And then after that, I kind of went to 1995. And then I was like, right, now all I can think of is just getting back to that best. But you forget what, what, what kind of sacrifices maybe we needed to get to that best. And sometimes there were things that you didn't want to stick to, like not going out, not seeing friends, not doing that. But all you're thinking of is getting back to that. So although we want to chase our best, sometimes all we need to do is look at where we are and then just try and improve on where we are. So yes, that was your best, that, you know, that's cool. But can where are you now? And let's see what's needed now to get you to there. Because if all you're thinking sometimes is, I remember when I was this way, or I remember when I did this, then that might seem like so far away that then you might start a race that you don't want to be in and you know you're not going to stick with it. So in that sense, it's like, yes, you were there, but rather than trying to have that concept of trying to think I need to get back to there, all you want to do is just try and raise the floor. So raise your average. And by that, it's like, last week I didn't go to the gym, right? This week, let's just go for two walks. You've got better. Yes, you're not at your best, but you've got better than where you were. Or kind of last week I ate, I ate um, a takeaway every night. Well, this week I only have five takeaways. So it's having that small, slower increments rather than thinking, shit, I need to go to the gym five days a week. I need to cut out this, do this, do this. Cause it, cause it's just too hard on yourself and you're not going to stick with it. You might do one week, two weeks and then be like, Oh, stuff that I give up. And then you fall off the wagon. So you guys, you know, some of you guys might be in there in like in that sense that you start something, you have all these kind of great intentions, your motivation's high, but then two weeks later, it, you know, it's gone again. And that's just because either your goal setting's wrong. You started a race that you didn't want to be in and you just didn't have the correct plan. So kind of to wrap that up, you've got, uh, we use a framework called the OPP framework and it stands for optimized principles and kind of preference. So optimize is what do you want? Why do you want it? How much do you want this? By when? Or do you even want it? So many people, not so many, I shouldn't say that. A lot of people come to the gym and they start chasing a goal where they don't even want it. They just see their friend doing it and think, well, I need to be doing that. So whenever you're setting goals, you've got to have a deeper reason to it. And that can be trying to, you know, yes, holidays and stuff are going to give you some incentive, but it's having more of a, you know, what's the identity? Who do you want to be? And you can go quite deep into that type of stuff. So understanding kind of what do you want? Then it's the key thing is understanding the principle around that, the governing principle. So if someone comes to me and says, John, I want, like, I want to lose weight. Cool. So the principle for losing weight is you have to be in a calorie deficit. That's the only way to lose weight. Okay. If you want to build muscle, you've got to be in a, a slight calorie surplus and you've got to follow a proper strength kind of training kind of plan. So now we know what we want. Now we know what the principles are. However they look, you can do, you can be in a calorie deficit and have just have um, kind of Mars bars every day. Yes, it's, isn't ideal but you're in a deficit and you'll probably lose weight cool now it's then the the last one is the most important one which is your preferences and that comes back to what do you like to do what do you want to do and these are your bumpers you want to be cake you know you want to go out cool this this, and this so now we know what we want what we're trying to optimize for we know what the principles are we know what your preferences are now we can build a plan if you don't understand all those things it's hard for me or it's hard for any coach to you know, to, to, to kind of give you some advice because I can give you something and you can be like, well, Sean, I don't like that food. And I don't like that. I don't like that exercise and I'm not going to go to the gym. So it's like, it's, it's just kind of really understanding what the principles are and what your preferences are. If you can identify those things, you'll crack this. And then you'll realize that actually this whole thing about healthy living and stuff is actually quite easy to do because you can do the things that you want to, if you understand the whole, um, everything around it. So, Obviously, I can't give you any blanket advice. Our approach is to go slower in order to go faster. Um, it's about how to make decisions, how to be happy, how to be confident, how to truly make those long-term kind of choices. And so that when you, you, know, when you do then start to make these choices, you know, they are second nature. You've learned these things. And that's like the key thing is like, um, you know, when you learn about yourself, you learn about things about your personalities, your drivers, your kind of preferences. All of a sudden, you start to get the results that you wanted. Um, and that's just because you're understanding you as, as a whole rather than, 
I need to do that diet. I need to do this. I need to do that. And I guess to do all that, the single most important thing is just understanding, understanding the information that's around you. So your level of education that needs to come up a little bit, whether it's food, exercise or whatever, to get the results you want. Because at the end of the day, people don't realize how much choice they have, you know, when it comes to their kind of transformation, um, their, their kind of journey. There's a lot of choice that you guys can do and cannot do. It's just understanding the governing rules around that. So I hope that's been a little bit insightful in terms of what things to think about. Um, obviously, I can't tell you the best exercise or the best is because there's so many variables and there's so many things and I don't know anything about you guys. Does that, does that kind of relate to anyone or does anyone have any questions around that? I think for me it resonates because I think I'm quite... I think the point around if it's not your goal, you're not going to do it. I think I think I should be doing gym work, so I'm fine, but I don't really want to. <laughs> so it's like, why am I forcing myself to do something I actually don't want to do? And what is, why is it, if it's not my goal, why am I trying to achieve it? Yeah. And it's easy to get drawn into that with kind of society, media, social media, everyone's showing what they're doing in the gym and stuff. And you're actually, well, I hate the gym. But then, but, and, and then you start to associate do I need to go to the gym to get the results I want? And maybe in your head you do believe that, whereas actually you might not need to do that. So that's key in, in just understanding those things. Hi, um, hi, it's Emine. I've got a question. Yeah. Um, so you say about um, calorie counting, like if you want if you're wanting to lose weight and that can be a good strategy. Um, the only thing is, is that if I find that if I calorie count, I end up just looking at different calories and you end up like, I don't know about other people, but you end up just getting obsessed with it and you're thinking, oh, I've got three more hundred more calories and I've done this. Would you, would you say that just maybe if you're not a calorie counting person, maybe just like, because I still want to, I don't want to go without of some of the foods I enjoy, like maybe like I want pie or chips and things like that. But would you say maybe just would portion control be a good thing to do as well? As long as you might eat the bad things, but as long as you're doing portion control every day, that could be a good thing, better thing. Yeah. So, like on that note, I would say I like I personally don't don't kind of track calories just because I, I I wouldn't be bothered be doing all that stuff. Although to have an understanding in the first place of what foods are, you have to do some some form of tracking. But I do know that people can get quite anal over. I've got 300 calories left, or I've only got this left. I've got that left. But that's because your awareness is kind of increasing. So once you get to a certain level of awareness, so like if you come to me and say, I haven't got a clue about food, I might be like, guys, hold on a minute. I've just got someone at the door. Two seconds. Oh, I love Zoom. <laughs> a lovely kitchen, isn't it? All right, very nice. A lovely everything, Beth. <laughs> Let the game to show us around. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, I would say uh, I would say that you have to track for two to three weeks first, just to understand where foods are, because a lot of people don't know where carbs are hidden, where fats are hidden, where where's the protein. So like, if you don't know that, you need to learn it. So then, obviously, once you get to a level of understanding, which for some might be a week, for some might be months and months, then you can then be like, all right, now I've got an idea. Then you can go to maybe portion control, and you can use your palm and your, you know, your thumb and, and, you know, your cupped hands for like a bit of a reference. And then kind of once you've got that reference, then yeah, by all means, just go on your general concept of what food is. So there's my carbs, there's my fats, there's my protein. Cool. I like that. But then also understand that tracking in the, in the sense of using um, your phone and stuff is obviously very accurate. Someone's sense of tracking when it comes to portion control can vary so much. So on that note, I'd say if you're not getting the results that you want, then maybe your portion control is off and therefore you probably need to go back into tracking for a couple of weeks. Thank you. No, that is a big help. Thank you. It is. I mean, obviously, you know, kind of tracking is a pain because it's like you're on your phone and you're typing and you're trying to type half a banana that you've just bit. And it's like, oh man, I can't be bothered. But then you go, over time, you start to go, okay, well, that's maybe... 25 grams of carbs, right? I'll have half, I'll have this. I mean, but not that you want to think of that in food, but it's like a process. That's what you do. First, you learn it. Then you start to 
all you see is numbers everywhere. And then you go to the phase of, I just want to enjoy my food. Yeah, and I end up forgetting anyway. And I think, oh, crap, I ate something earlier. And I don't remember what it is. And I'm not, I don't always want to write down all the little nibbly bits I might be. <laughs> I don't like to count them. <laughs> yeah, no, I like, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, so don't, you know, don't, don't think that you have to to get the results you want. Um, it's more in the sense of just uh, being aware. It's like if you can increase your awareness, then it's like, you know, you're one step ahead of the game already. Cool. Thanks a lot. I've actually, I'll, um, I'll drop the link in. Got a link on uh, just like a bit of a PDF with just a bit more info on the stuff that we've spoke about. So can I drop this into the text? If you want it, you can just jump into there and it will just kind of go into things in a little bit more detail on, on how we do things and you might get more of an insight in there on that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, just always try and look through those type of lenses. Um, am I doing this for me? Can, what do I want? You know, what's the governing principle around it? And then what are my preferences? And then build out, build your week out, build your days out, build everything out. Um, and yes, it is a learning curve. You know, it isn't going to happen overnight, but by just having that persistence of just understanding food as a whole, exercise as a whole, then yeah, just, just enjoy life and enjoy your food with it. Nibby, have you got any questions? Um, I knew you were going to ask me that. No, I haven't really, because I don't know, but... I was going to ask just for everyone else's benefit because obviously you're vegan, aren't you? So would you, how have you, like what's, what have you noticed since going vegan? That's No pressure. Um, Ooh, well, I, I moved to a plant-based diet uh, three years ago and being in the gym, because I've been in the, in, in the gym industry for 15 odd years now and it's like, got to get your protein, got to eat meat. And I used to eat a lot. I used to eat red meat every day, five eggs a day. You know, I was did that religiously all the time. And, and then you start to kind of question, why am I eating so much of this stuff? Why am I forcing this down me all the time? Um, I don't enjoy it anymore. I'm, all I'm eating is chicken and broccoli because that's what you've got to do to be healthy. I'm like, stuff all this. Um, so it was a bit of a kind of curiosity in the sense of I want to do something different and I'm sick of eating this way and maybe feeling a bit this way. Um, so I thought I'll do, I'll do 30 days to see how it goes. And um, it did 30 days, and I was just like, wow, I just feel so much better. I feel more energy, um, don't get like the afternoon kind of lulls and stuff like that, eating different foods, kind of cooking different. Because, like, you know, if on a plate you've got some potatoes, some veg, and a piece of meat, you take away the piece of meat, you're like, well, what goes there? I don't know what goes there. So then it becomes a learning curve, and what can you cook? How can you cook? And three years ago, in, like, in the three years I've been, I've been this now. There's so much more variation now. I think if I would have turned this way 10 years ago, it would have been hard because there wasn't much really talk about it. And it was vegan was always looked at like, oh, look, you know, you're a bit weird over there. So I was not like, I never did it in the sense of for the animals. Uh, I did, always did it more from just being healthy and just feeling better. But that's not to say that you don't think about the animals because the more you, you read into it and the more you see, you think, well, hold on a minute, are we doing the right thing? But that's a whole other topic. So yeah, I, I think I, for me, it was just more from a health point of view. And, um, and my wife did it as well, so, which, which obviously makes it easier. Although I, I, I've got two boys and they still eat meat for now because it's their choice. But for now, I, like, I don't miss it. I feel good. Um, I've not lost any strength. I feel fit. Yeah, no, everything's fine. Because like, you know, you, you read the stuff and it's like, you know, you take away the meat and the dairy and stuff and you're going to, you're going to lose weight. You're going to do this. You're going to have, you know, this is going to happen to you. And I think I did lose weight at first just because I wasn't eating enough. And then you realize how dense, how calorie dense meat is or kind of red meat is. So then you take that away and you, you know, you're saving a lot of calories. So that's probably why I lost the weight initially. But then, you know, that's just, that's the whole kind of learning curve, learn how to cook in a different way. So yeah, three years on, um, I'm enjoying it. Is anyone here? Does anyone here eat the plant-based diet or? Um, I I do. I'm well. I was vegetarian. Been vegetarian um, since I was like 
well, since I went to uni and I could actually pick what I could cook, I decided I wanted to go veggie and I did the same as you. I, I tried it for a month and then I felt so much better um, that I carried on. But then I did Veganuary um, and realised that actually what I thought would be really difficult to give up. So I used to have eggs um, for breakfast every day. Um, I was like, what What am I going to have in in kind of to substitute that um but I actually found it relatively easy I think you're right I think there's so many different things you can have now and as long as you make that time because for me it was it was just making sure I've, I've made that time to prep food or um you know take take things in for, for lunch but to be honest I was doing that being veggie anyway because yeah. Tesco meal deals get really boring after after a while with veggie stuff anyway so um yeah, so I've just kind of stuck with it. Um, and I have, in the main, like felt a lot better. I think the one thing for me is when I've talked to personal trainers um, or people who are my friends who are quite into fitness, they always say to me, God, you eat too many carbs because <laughs> I do eat a lot of like yeah. rice, pasta, um, lentils, that sort of thing. So I, I guess I just always worry about like, am I am I having enough protein? Because people who eat meat tell me that I'm, I'm not, but I think I am because I eat a lot of pulses, mm -hmm. tofu, um, peanut butter I'm obsessed with. Yeah, um, so all that sort of stuff. So I, I think I am, but then you do, you hear so many things where people say, oh, well, if you don't, if you're not eating meat, then you're not getting enough protein. And there's different schools of thought on that. It, like if you, you could ask 10 people, how much protein should I eat? And everyone's going to tell you something different, but, and, and I guess that was the thing for me. It's like, where then do you get your protein from? Because your carbs are a lot higher. And this is why, this is why you always got to go to maybe calories first is like, in terms of any diet, always look at your calories. Then when you're doing that, you can go to macros, but some people might do better on a high fat diet. Some people might do better on a higher carb diet and you don't really know it until you do it. So yeah, I wouldn't stress too much on the protein because if you're eating your pulses, you're eating some, your peanut butter, your tofu, then you probably got it covered um because you probably want to be hitting about 0.85 per pound and that's maybe if you're doing strength training and stuff like that so yeah i would say i would say you'd be fine the only thing where i would where where you could look at it is if your goals was strength based and to build muscle and if that wasn't happening you could then say well actually am i then eating enough but then you could there's so many other variables you could look into um, but I think the whole, the hardest thing with, with being plant-based is the, uh, is the whole social norm more than anything. You know, when I first went, everyone was like, so you run a gym and now you, uh, and now you don't eat meat. What the hell? <laughs> you know what's going on? So, and then you go out to, you go out for food with people and, and they're ordering steaks and they're like, do you not wish you had this? I'm like, well, no, I don't. So once you can get over that, and if, if you have that approach of, I don't really care, I'm doing it for me, then I think you'd be fine. Have you enjoyed it since being going, since being? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it helps that my partner's the same as yeah. well. I think that was my, um, <laughs> I had so many um, kind of guys that I've dated before who were just so not, not kind about vegetarians in any way, shape or form, which really put me off. Um, so, and then, then when I thought about going vegan, I was like, oh my God, like, and you do get the, odd, you, you still get the odd pe person like saying stuff. Like I've got, um, a friend who is obsessed with gym and strength tra training. And every time I meet with him, he's always like, are you still vegetarian? Yeah. You just get, you get used to that, I guess. Um, you just and, let your performance do the talking. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like, it, well, I, do you know what? I, I feel like I've got so much more energy. I, before I went vegetarian, I was not interested in food and I just used to eat cheese and pasta all the time and put on so much weight. So I think you, once you work out what you want to cook and you have like a few things, then it, it kind of, it makes it, makes it okay. But yeah, I do always worry sometimes like, you know, if you go around to someone's house and they get dead funny about like, oh, yeah. like, what am I going to cook yeah. you? And I'm honestly like, it's absolutely fine I really don't don't mind or you're probably the, so with me like I know if I'm going around to someone's house I might just take some snacks in my bag yeah. <laughs> just in case oh, yeah yeah <laughs> just in case like 
And how do you cook? Come on, what do you mean? Well, then, you know, when people say to me, what do I eat? I'm like, I actually don't really know what I eat. Because it's, <laughs> it's just like normal now. I eat, I eat all the things you eat, but just I don't eat meat. <laughs> so I still have a spag bowl, but I'll just use a different, you know, exactly, yeah. different sauce. Um, so, yeah, no, it is interesting. And uh, I think it's a lot easier nowadays, though. So much easier, yeah. But it's those, it's those kind of beliefs that you build up in your head. And like we're saying, if you believe cake's bad, or if you believe being a vegan, because I remember being a PT, one-on-one PT years ago, and anyone who came to me who, who was a veggie, I was like, oh, what are you doing? You're not going to get the results you need because you need your protein. So that was just my belief, and I had that for so long, and I'm so annoyed that I had that for so long. But that's the whole same thing with people's kind of beliefs around food and exercise now. You've got to get rid of all that and then just understand the principle and then just build on it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, cool. So, guys, was that all right? Did I cover what you thought I was going to cover or did you think I was going to tell you some secret things? <laughs> like the best exercise. If you were to ask me the best exercise, I'd probably say farmer's walks. Is that official? That's official. I remember writing an article for Men's Health once and they said, what's the best exercise? So I, I did it on uh, farmer's walks. But then they said to me, can you do one on the best chest exercise? I was like, no. <laughs> because they just, they then tell you what to write, basically. Yeah, you know, you cannot just put it as uh, flies and all that type of fluff stuff. And like, no, I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> um, but yeah, I um, hope I've kind of given you a bit of an insight into, into this. Um, it's not as hard as what people kind of make out to be. It's just understanding you at the end of the day. And obviously, Nibby, you've, you know, you've been on a bit of a journey as well. Mm-hmm. All your colleagues probably know that. Talk yeah. about the journey, Daniel. Uh, yeah, let's talk about this journey. <laughs> about 25 minutes. Go on. <laughs> no, um, when I joined Teltworks, I was already through the journey. So they have only yeah. met, so we don't know anything. Come on, tell us. <laughs> That's why I actually messaged Sean before this and I was like, please don't show any before and after pictures of me on this, on this talk. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. No, cool, cool. Well, I um, hope, uh, hope all that was helpful. Mm-hmm. And if you've got any issues or anything, then go on that link, have a, have a little look at it. We have a group and stuff that you can join that and just add stuff to every now and then. Uh, but any questions, just add me on Facebook or whatnot and we can have a chat. We'll message you for pictures of Danielle afterwards. I'll get yeah, them. Off. Everyone seems to want these pictures of you, Danielle. I have to yeah, I'll open the folder up and have a look. <laughs> Danielle, why did you get into it to all that sort of stuff then? That's um, all that I ever really want to know is like because I've never really been interested in going to the gym. I've tried. No, I absolutely hate it. Um I was probably like the laziest, slobbest person ever. I used to eat piles of pasta every single day and just you know just I just didn't care about food and nutrition didn't care about going to the gym or running or anything Um, and then it just kind of got a bit too much for me I don't know what age it was just kind of like I wasn't happy do you know what I mean just generally like mental health I was struggling a little bit with that kind of stuff and I was just like I need to do something I need to make a change and that was it really I just kind of decided and can't waste my whole 20s feeling like that I need to actually just do it so I did. Wow. <laughs> it, it sounds really simple. But it's obviously not easy. It sounds easy, but it's not because you have to have so much like inner strength. And I think that's what S and P did for me. Obviously, like plug in S and P, but they mm. had to, like get through that mental block because I would, it took me about two years to even figure out how to be in a calorie deficit. Like I had no clue how to do that. Um, so it's definitely not easy. It's just, I think it's, it's more mental than anything. Um, the hard bit there is you can't, you can't force people to go to the gym. It's like, you can't force these things on people. Something needs to click. Something needs to happen in your life that you go, I've had enough. I want this now. And you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But the whole thing about life is just enjoy it. Just do what you want. So I think that's what um, you were talking about when you were talking about the optimize thing is like, find your why. Mm. Yeah. Like, what would you, how do people find their why? Like, what would you do? Pretty good deep. <laughs> I think like, you know, like here's a simple way. Think of it as like uh, your identity. So if my identity is I'm a father of two and I run a gym, 
So I want to be seen as a person who lives up to that identity. And in my eyes, and obviously this is going to be different for everyone, and it might not stay with me my whole life. I might reach a point where I've like hit 40 and go, right, now I'm happy to have a beer belly and be a dad. Right now I'm not. So it's like, okay, well, for that, for my kids, I need to show up daily being an active person because I want that because I want them to see what that's like. So they grow up to then do what they want. And as a gym owner, or like a fitness business owner, I, I need to show up preaching what I'm saying. So, so that's my identity for me doing what I do day in, day out. And the whole thing on motivation, kind of motivation will come and go all the time. I can watch a movie. I can watch that Jordan episode and think, man, I need to get to the gym now. But my underlying principles is my identity. And if I get then some extra motivation, it's awesome because then I've got two things. So that's why, you know, you never want to rely on just having a bit of motivation because that will just come and go all the time. You've got to have a bit of a deeper, a deeper route to it. Which, you know, you have to go, and you know, not too deep, but it's just like, you know, what am I here to do in life? Understand those things and ask yourself, am I happy? If you're not happy, then change. If you are happy, cool. But then just kind of crack on. I think the problem I have, and some people might recognize, is that we work, I mean, I work really hard on long, long hours. By the end of the day, I really don't want to go to the gym or go for a a long, stressful day. I know there's obviously a thing around once you get out, you feel better and it's good for you and you'll feel better when you go and you'll sleep better. But getting out after having a long, stressful day, the last thing I want to do is run. Or mm. twice. I want to eat a packet of crisps and watch t- TV. Yeah. I think <laughs> Lucy's well, that's not. Where, that's, yeah. where our, that's where our society as a whole has just got it wrong. Whereas at Sweden, they have four day weeks, is it? I mean, I'm hoping after this, everyone can realize actually we're not a healthy society that, 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 that much. So how can we do things better? Let's stop. You know, let's stop working our guys so hard. Everyone goes home from a nine to five and works for two more hours. It's like, what the hell? So I guess as a society, we're just, we, you know, we are messed up there. And that's, that's always going to be people's sticking point. Because like you said, you get home from work, you do want to go and hit some squats or, you know, do a pump class or whatever. You just want to sit on the sofa and chill out. Yeah, so if you have any tips about that, that'd be great. But I'm, I'm guessing there isn't. <laughs> well, we'll speak to your boss. Danny, sort it out. Sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Heather, have you not found, because I found, like, working from home, like, I've actually got that commute in time. Like, I've just made it part of my routine of, like, going for a run. Like, so I, I used to get up at six, quarter to six in the morning to go to work. And I and then I wouldn't be back home until like half half five. So I was I was knackered, and I think in all honesty, I was probably thinking about going to the gym for the wrong reasons. I was going to the gym because everyone else was going to the gym, and I wanted this Instagram body, which is just not like not what I wanted. And then I don't know. I had like a couple of weeks in lockdown where I didn't do anything, and I felt really rubbish. And then I realized that like I needed to do something and I started running. I did that couch to 5k thing and I could literally run for three minutes and I was out of breath. But I realized that it actually made my head feel so much better in the day that I felt like there was something and there was a reason why I should keep trying to do it. So I've just made it my routine and I get out of bed and sometimes I am knackered, but I run. If it's a running day, I run. It's a, I have to run on a running day and I know that it will help me feel better in the day because and, and I worked out like I'm not doing it because I want an Instagram body now I'm doing it because I want to feel better in myself and it does it sounds fucking cheesy and I would, if I would have said that like in yeah. at, like in uni I would have been like what what am I on but it's honestly helped me so much and I just think it's so ironic that in the midst of a pandemic I've felt the less like the least anxious I ever have in my life <laughs> because I've actually got some time to it's like you know when you go out running and you're not thinking about anything you, you know your subconscious gets to work and you come back after a run or exercise and you've probably got so many more ideas for work and then you start thinking actually well that that relates to that makes me feel better for that so I need to build these habits in and it is everything's habit, everything's your behavior. I think Heather as well. I think 
because I don't know about you, Heather, but I've never had a particularly healthy relationship with exercise. I've either gone for it and burnt myself out or I've just not done it. I've always had, it, it took a long time for me to disassociate like pain and exercise because, mm. you know, especially at school, you're forced to do stuff and I'm like, my body's not made to do this. Um, and so a big thing for me was learning to like move in the ways that make you feel good. So like actually for me personally, it's yoga. I just, I, I love doing yoga. Nice. Um, it could be like, you love dancing so you can do a dance class or whatever it is. Cause like not everyone is going to be a runner and, uh, like for me anyway it's like that's okay if I'm not a runner I'll still go out for a two-hour walk or whatever but I think moving in ways that make you feel good is really important because it's so hard to break down that mental barrier of exercise is all about making my body smaller or whatever it is and it's about looking at okay actually I'm doing this because it helps my you know mentally it helps me feel better or I want to be stronger or whatever it is but I think that's a really big learning for me yeah, totally. And that's you just optimizing things for you and having that thing of, if I don't want to go to the gym, why am I going to the gym? And that's probably, you know, guys like me 10 years ago, kind of new to the game. When people come in, I'm like, right, I'm going to punish this person. You know, having that mindset of, I'm just going to hurt every person who comes in because that's what you think, you know, that's what you used to believe, you know, um, you know, to get results. Well, actually, it doesn't, it scares, you know, that, that, that harms people, it scares people away. So it's, yeah, it's uh, optimize things for you and just go slow. Take your time and enjoy it. So is everyone having a beer tonight then? <laughs> In the beer garden? I was thinking about having a gin. <laughs> it is gin weather now with the sunshine. Well, like we should. But Lucy has a whole cocktail cart. She has, she has her husband making cocktails, so... <laughs> <laughs> mm. Lovely, guys. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so um, much. Thank you so that much. That was all right. Yeah. And um, yeah, any it's, other questions? Just I, I think just for me, I came into this really with a lot of trepidation. I think I was a little bit like, oh, is this going to be another super fit guy who's going to be talking about like, you know, this is how to burn belly fat and stuff like that. And I was really not sure that it was going to be beneficial. But actually, I think your approach is really refreshing and it echoes a lot of this stuff that is being kind of put out there a bit more about it being personal to you and doing what's right for you. And I think I really appreciate it as well that at no point when you're talking about food, at no point did you make a point of saying bad food and good food and stuff like that, that you've been very much food is food. You just have to understand how it fuels your body and stuff like that. So from the resident fat girl, that was actually really good. So thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh Beth, I love you. <laughs> like the biggest thing or the biggest word we like to use now is it depends. Can I eat that? Well, it depends. Everything depends on you so that's our that's our motto <laughs> so enjoy the like enjoy the weather go get the vitamin d it's good for you that i will say that it's good for you <laughs> is that you say we can go home now well, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Then. you can sign off work all right <laughs> thank you all right guys i'll see all you, right, you. Okay. Thanks see you later. so much bye-bye